dude, the new bloodline. I'll tell you this: the new bloodline's kind of funny, dude. I like. <laughs> like it. this it's weird. really grown on me. I love Tamatanga coming out. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> It's so funny. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Burning Hammer podcast. I'm Mark Izzo, joined as always, but with Dylan to the O to the Brian. And we have a pretty sweet episode of the podcast. We're going to get into uh, the the dog event that is this Saturday, September 28th. And then we're going to talk about the new match that got added for Bad Blood in WWE later on. But before we get into that, the... Two best ways to support us is to buy our merch. You can head over to tpublic.com, search up The Burning Hammer, or you can click the link in the description or in our bios of our social media accounts. Uh, We have a ton of great designs, and then we have uh, another design that's coming out this Saturday. And if you don't want to have to order it online, you can come to the dog show. We will be slinging some t-shirts there. Uh, so if you don't want to have to pay for shipping and all that nonsense, you better pull up to this dog event this Saturday. And then another great way to support us is to sign up for our Patreon. For $1 a month, you can join the World Champion tier. And with that tier, you get ad-free content, early access to all of our content, plus exclusive content. But even if you don't want to pay the $1 a month, you can still sign up for a free account. And we still do post some stuff on there. So like I said, Dog is hosting an event September 28th, Sacred Heart Church in Riverton, New Jersey. Bell time is 7.30. Admission is $20. Dog Unleashed will be there. We better see you guys there. And we're going to get into what to expect at that show. Isn't that right, Dylan? Uh, That's exactly what we're going to do. I have uh, five matches written down here, and there is going to be some more action than that. Uh, These are just the five matches that... Uh, we've gotten a little bit of information on from the talent and the workers in that match because uh, we've seen some promos going on uh, through the dog Instagram page, uh, kind of preparing and setting up for this event. Uh, so I wanted to get in to some of those uh, high highlight matches uh, that, that have uh, been uh, kind of highlighted on the dog social media. Uh, so, guys, make sure you go follow Dog, uh, Dog underscore Unleashed uh, on Instagram, and they are uh, they are they have been great uh, to the Burning Hammer over here, and we're really excited uh, to get this partnership going even further and take the next step by uh, doing this live podcast at this dog event. Um, so all their Burning stuff ha- will be linked in the description as well, all their social yeah. media and their website and stuff too. Yeah, so um, if you are a fan of the Burning Hammer, uh, then you're obviously a fan of wrestling, which means you should definitely pull through and pull up to Dog, uh, to the Dog event at Sacred Heart Church, Sacred Heart Church, Riverton, New Jersey, uh, September 28th. Uh, it's going to be an absolute blast. We will be there. Uh, like Mark said, we're going to have merch. Uh, we're gonna have uh, stickers to give out. Uh, we're we're gonna be able to uh, take all of your uh, opinions uh, straight to the face, and then uh, mm. you know maneuver the pod uh, how we have to. To uh, yeah, let's get some more light in here. Uh, kind of uh, do the pod how we have to uh, to make you guys happy. So let's get into this card, though, Mark. Yeah, um, I mean. Dude, we got a ton of great matches here. Yeah, so the first thing uh, I'm going to get into is uh, we got the World Wrestling Grand Prix Heavyweight Champion of the World, David Goldie. Uh, you may be familiar with David Goldie uh, if you watched uh, you know, Apple TV's uh, Monster Factory um, 
and he was kind of the star of their uh kind of the kind of one of the highlight stars over uh when they made that show um so david goldie has been doing some incredible things in the wrestling industry and this is going to be me and mark's first chance to see him wrestle live and in person so uh i'm incredibly excited for that um you could even just tell by the you know the way he delivered his promo um he is you know he's really got the knack for this thing um so he is on top uh of the world wrestling grand prix right now and he will be defending his title against indigenous pat sawyer um so pat sawyer is looking to take that title off of david goldie and uh teach you know everybody in dog and everybody in that crowd uh you know uh culture them a little bit um because i i could tell in his in in his promo uh, if anybody saw you know he was doing some smudging uh which is something they do in his culture to uh rid you know uh bad energy and things like that so he's going to make sure that uh that's what he does in in his own words so uh, i'm i'm very excited for this match we got the world wrestling grand prix championship on the line mark yeah, that match is going to be absolutely awesome. That's going to be one that you're not going to want to miss, and it could be the best match on the whole freaking card. So, Dill, why don't you uh, talk us through another match that you're fired up for? Yeah, uh, staying in the World Wrestling Grand Prix, uh, the Women's Championship is also going to be defended. Uh, the current uh, WWGP Women's Champion is Valerie Vermin. And she is taking on Zoe Cannon in her dog debut. Uh, Zoe Cannon has never wrestled at a dog event before. And she is going after Valerie Vermin's World Wrestling Grand Prix, Grand Prix Women's Championship. Uh, both these women had some heated words to exchange over social media. Uh, Zoe Cannon making sure that everyone knows this will be a Cannon event. Uh, but uh, Valerie Vermin uh, seems not scared one bit uh to defend her title and i believe this is going to be an absolutely great match mark yeah this one again another great match these are all these matches are uh, a lot of fun and these are two of the top uh women's wrestlers um in indie wrestling especially in the area so it's going to be nice to see them lock up and see who walks out of there with the world wrestling grand prix women's championship uh yeah absolutely man and we we've got um We've got another. Uh, we've got another great match. That uh, after doing some research uh, on on both of the men in this match, uh, it seems like something that can be incredibly exciting. And that is marvelous making his return to dog wrestling, and he's going to be taking on Pedro Pablo. Uh, I, I wasn't too familiar with either of these men, uh, but I, you know, preparing for this dog card, uh, I've been uh, keeping up. Uh, we're tr trying to uh, immerse myself into uh, the talent as I can to prepare for this event. And uh, this is a match that seems like it's going to uh, that that could really steal the show potentially. Uh, Marvelous is a guy that I'm really, really intrigued to watch in person um, after doing some research on everybody on this event. Uh, I'd have to say that he's one of the guys I'm most excited to see in action uh, just because something about him. He has a little. I don't know. He has that uh, little uh, equality that I look for in some of my favorite wrestlers. So um, uh, I'm really excited to see that match. And it, uh, best believe it, it could be a show stealer. And we're going to hop right into this other one, Mark, unless you have yeah. something to say. Now let's hop into the next one. Yeah. So so this other one uh, that I got written down here is Samuel Thompson issuing an open challenge. Um, the last time... Samuel Thompson was in dangerous adrenaline wrestling gladiators. Uh, he took a loss to wet Brett Charters. Um, mm -hmm. And he plans to avenge that loss by issuing an open challenge. Uh, we don't know who, who is going. We move. don't know who is going to accept that challenge. Uh, so make sure that you're there in person. Samuel Thompson issuing an open challenge. Um, who knows? Give you a little. Maybe it'll be me you, or Dylan. We'll accept this who, open challenge. Who, who knows? knows? Maybe it'll be us. Maybe it'll be uh, you know the the current indie god Matt Cardona. Um, he's been making yeah. the rounds on indie wrestling. Um, it could be Roman Reigns. Um, there's a lot of guys that it potentially Jim Molino. 
it, it could, could be potent- Jim Molyneux. It could be anybody, Mark. Um, and that's one of the most beautiful things about open challenges is the surprise. So I can't wait to be surprised with an absolute banger of a match when Samuel Thompson issues this open challenge. Um, so, guys, make sure you're out there. I think this open challenge is going to be answered by somebody that we're all pretty excited to see. Yeah, and I'll tell you, I'll tell you what, Dylan. Um, he he's trying to, you know, avenge this loss that that he had last time he was in dog and. I don't know if doing an open challenge is the best way to try to get back in, into the win column here. You have no idea you could be going up against. So we'll see if, if this pays off yeah. for him. It's a bold I, I strategy, just... Cal, and we're going to see how it plays <laughs> out for him. Yeah, so I, I'm super excited to see who, who answers the call. Um, so we better see you guys there, and you'll see our reaction to who it is live. Um, so getting into this next match, we got somebody who has uh, – you know, joined us on this podcast before. Um, we have somebody who uh, shares the same hometown as Mark and I, so he's always going to have a near place in our heart because of that. But this guy has been truly despicable as of late. This guy he's has changed. no respect. Uh, he's changed. I've known Connor the Flag Boy since he was just in diapers, and <laughs> he was such a nice boy. He was. Yeah. He was what such happens, a nice Connor. He was such a nice I mean, boy. I know people who played baseball, you know, with Connor, and he was, you know, solid athlete and a very nice boy. Um, but he has turned into this menace um, and this Ugh. thorn in the side of the dog matchmaker Jim Molino, um, a legend in that fact, Jim Molino. Let's say that. Jim Molino, an ECW original referee, who will be at this event. Sure will be. He might be in that ring hitting some people with a three count. He might be on commentary. We don't know. He might be answering Samuel Thompson's open challenge. But Jim Molino is going to be there. And I'm sure one of the main reasons he's going to be there is to see Connor the Flag Boy take on the guy that is been in a lot of places that Connor the Flag Boy dreams to be at one day. Yeah. You know, he's made appearances in Ring of Honor. He's made appearances in WWE. And Jim Molyneux wants to teach Connor the Flag Boy a lesson. And we were lucky enough to have Jim Molyneux on our podcast, a legend, and a local legend in my opinion, because I grow Mm -hmm. up going to shows and events ran by the local legend and the wrestling legend, Jim Molyneux. So he played a huge role in my childhood. So when you disrespect Jim Molyneux, you're disrespecting a legion of people who grew up watching wrestling and watching wrestlers that were taught and and brought into this business by this incredibly, incredibly generous and kind man by the name of Jim Molyneux. So I haven't even said his name yet. He's going up against Tank Toland. Wow. And and Tank Toland is a big cat, man. Tank Toland. Oh, yeah. Tank Toland has been some places that Connor, like I said, dreams to go, like ROH and the WWE. Tank Toland has feuded and been in the ring with some guys that Connor the Flag Boy can only dream of being in the ring with one day. And he gets Uh, probably the biggest challenge, definitely, I will say, actually, the biggest challenge of his young career so far when he takes on Tank Tolan. But I got to tell you this. The one thing I will give Connor the Flag Boy some credit is he's not backing down, man. He doesn't seem scared. For Um, better or for worse. For better or for worse, Connor the Flag Boy is not backing down. And whether that's out of pure stupidity or... Mm. uh, whether it's out of uh, narcissism or an ego, or like mm. we said, or or unless he's just plain dumb, um, maybe all of them could be a little bit of everything involved. But Tank Tolan, that. Um, I mean, Tank Tolan put out a word on Instagram. We saw it, and he was Oops. in action flexing those biceps, brother. Um, oh my God. And he looks. Like he is truly in some of the best shape of his life, man. The guy, uh, the guy is still in incredible shape, and 
Connor, you know, wanted to tease him a little bit, doing a little bit mm. of his own curls yeah. with the the mm. muscle milk or whatever Connor uh, was holding, and pretty disrespectful, man. So not a good uh, move, Connor. Tank, a, a longtime move. friend of Jim Molino, and I think uh, he's probably going to teach Connor the flag boy lesson here. But who knows? Connor challenged him to a pose off, a flex off. Yeah, yeah. Um, so Not sure I don't know if we're do gonna that. get it. But if we're getting a Connor the Flag Boy versus Tank Tolan pose off, my money's on Tank. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I, so, I'm with you, along with probably every, like every I said, single person who's going to be in attendance there. This is the guy, Connor the Flag Boy. This is a guy who, under um, the tutelage of Dylan Mesh and Dave Daw, um, he has really completely changed. Like we said, this is a guy we used to know, guy from our hometown. Uh, he used to be a really nice boy, and now yeah. he's a flag boy for a de despicable team of guys, and he's despicable yeah. himself. He's changed, yeah. and he has disrespected a man, like we said, who had a great impact on our childhood because we used to go to shows consistently on a weekly basis that this man, Jim yeah. Molyneux, was hosting, that this man, yeah. Jim Molyneux, was putting together. He was putting together the, the card for these events. And you disrespected him. Hmm. You disrespected a legend in this business. Mm -hmm. Tank Tolan is going to uh, going to do something about it. So let's get into this one last match, Mark. And that is yeah. the dangerous adrenaline wrestling gladiators, world heavyweight champion, Breaker Moran, who recently announced that he will be retiring from in-ring competition. But this man is still going out on top. And he is not done quite yet. No, he's not. And one thing that Breaker Morant is dead set on is he's not leaving this business giving up that title to Eric Martin on September 28th. <laughs> so we got Breaker Morant. Taking on Eric Martin, a guy who, you know, we, we heard Breaker talk about it a little bit on Instagram. Uh, he, he was there uh, when Eric Martin broke into this business, um, and, and he helped him along the way. And now, years later, um, they're going up against each other on Breaker Morant's retirement tour um, for the Dog World Championship. Um, so there's some history between these two men. And and there is uh I'm I'm sure it's gonna be an emotional ride for Breaker Morant, but I can tell you one thing. That man has a lot of fight left in him, and he oh, yeah. ain't done yet. No, so he's not. Uh we've we this we may be uh coming toward the end of Breaker Morant's in ring career, but we ain't done yet. He still no. got more to give. So Make sure you hop out on September 28th to see him defend and hopefully retain the the Dog World Heavyweight Wrestling Championship. Yeah, I mean, that's going to be an absolute banger. And I'll tell you what, Dylan, I, I, I would not want to be the man trying to take that Dog World Championship off of Breaker Moran because it's going to take a whole heck of a lot to get that title off around his waist. Breaker Moran is not going to go down easy. Like you said, he's got a lot of fight left in him. And we are going to see one hell of a fight between those, those gentlemen come September 28th, Sacred Heart Church, Riverton, New Jersey. We hope to see you guys there. Uh, again, all of Dog's stuff will be linked in the description. Uh, 7.30 bell time, $20 admission. We better see you there. And if you see us there, come say what's up. And, and you know, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll chop it up with you, and you can come at us for uh, any takes that, that you don't agree with. Um, you know, maybe one including... Uh, a guy by the name of Pat McAfee, but you know, if you who knows what's gonna happen with all that stuff, you know, apparently we Dylan had a little bit of a heel turn uh, these past couple of weeks, but uh, you know, that's in the past. We're gonna leave that there, and we're gonna look forward, and we're gonna look forward to bad blood because we have uh, another match that got added to the card since the last time we recorded. And, and that is one that we did not see coming, Dylan. I, 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 we've talked about different matches that could happen, and this was not one that was 
really remotely on the radar for for either of us and that's roman reigns teaming up with the american nightmare and your wwe champion cody rhodes to take on jacob fatu and the the new head of the table solo sokoa so dylan why don't you take us through your thoughts on them opting to do this tag team match at bad blood listen man so i was thinking about it Mm. in the aspect of after watching smackdown last night Mm -hmm. and the story that they are telling um which and and i touched on this on the podcast i wasn't exactly sure how it was going to happen but i said that cody was going to slowly lose all of his friends um, and he was going to then eventually lose the title. And instead of winning the title with the help of so many people, because everyone's working against him, he's going to have to work all the way back uh, on his own. And I think the first step, we're, we're seeing it come to fruition in this first step uh, with Kevin Owens being the first one to most likely turn on Cody. Um, we got it hinted at it yesterday. Uh Kevin Owens obviously not super happy about Cody Rhodes teaming up with Roman Reigns after everything that Cody uh, and after everything that Kevin has done, you know, against the bloodline and for Cody against the bloodline uh, in these last, you know, few years. So uh, they're really hinting at it. But I will say this. So I, I don't hate it in the aspect of I love like I I love the story that they're telling. I do. And I think it's going to be worth it in the end because I think it's going to be, it's going to lead to this version of Cody that is broken down and he's alone and everything that everyone hates about Cody um, is going to come back and, and bite him in the ass. You know what I mean? When people say, Oh, he's, you know what I mean? People hate that. He's okay with teaming up with Roman. Exactly. Everyone else, and and they're playing on it. KO hates it too. Everyone else should hate it because it's like, you're stupid. Why are you doing that? Like, you really shouldn't be doing that. Like, you have no no reason to do that for this guy. So, like I said, with the story that they're telling um, and the story that seems like it's going to be told long term, um, I'd like to sit and wait. You know what I mean? Because I think they can go somewhere. I think they can go somewhere. Really, really not cool with this. I will say, looking at it from the aspect of looking at it at it in a different aspect, when you're just taking the story out of it completely, and we're just talking about matches on this card and building an event, right? Um, it seems a little like it's like a bet. It's a it's a cop out. You know what I mean? It's they don't want to they they. They don't want to choose on who to put in the main event. Like, that's really what it is. They don't want to choose between Cody and Roman. Um, So, and I think, like I said, they obviously have other plans and how the story is going to be told. So, I think think they're doing it well. And I think, like I said, I love these slow, long-term stories. So, I don't mind. Like, I don't peep whatever i i like the story that's going where cody's going and i think people will really enjoy it too if they just sit back and let it watch because the people who want all this shit to bite cody in the ass it's going to wait yeah it's going to you know what i mean you'll see cody's downfall and it's going to be almost deserved you know what i mean he's going to bring it on himself in a way um so it'll be interesting but like i said from the aspect of looking at it just through the event it's a cop out because you could like i'd like to hear your take on it because the last thing i want to say before i just like let you kind of take over and talk for a little bit on it because i've been talking is that i'm just like having two guys that you feel like should be in the main event like that's not a problem you know what i mean that that is a good that's a good problem to have essentially that's what i'm saying so like roman reigns opening a show because it's in cody Rhodes' hometown and he's the wwe champion like 
that that shows you like I'd rather like in in the aspect of looking at it from the outside from the event I'm like is are, are every time Cody and Roman are on the same card are they going to like have to be in a match against each other cuz neither one of them cannot be in the main event like yeah um and it's like yeah I'm just saying like if you look at it from the perspective of like if it was like Roman and Jimmy or something right um which we probably will get at some point um but like let's just say it was like roman and jimmy like they brought jimmy back for it um and then you have cody and uh, whatever continuing the feud with ko or something um i just feel like then it's like then your then your problem is that you have a, a card that is so stacked and people are like this is insane cody and roman and like it's a good problem to have, like I said. So, yeah, I'd like to hear your take on it. So, let, let me ask you this real quick. Who do you think they would choose to put in a main event? Cody or Roman? Let's say both guys have singles matches on the card. Who do you think they're putting in that main event spot for, like, any PLE down the line? I think it depends. Okay. On what? Definitely who they're going up against. And, like, if it's Roman Rock, like, obviously, you know what I mean? Like, it doesn't matter if Cody's champion or not. Like, that's a main event. Yeah. So, um, but if it's, like, Roman Solo one-on-one, right, at some point, and then we, but then at that point, we've gotten a KO heel turn, and the Cody KO feud is really, really hot. Like, that should be the main event. Okay. In that situation, because that's the title feud, and that's like, what if, what if it's like Roman versus Solo, and then Cody versus Fatu for the WWE title? It should be Cody versus Fatu. It should be. But what do you I don't, think they would do? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know I, I, exactly. And I'll tell you what. The problem, like I, I, I definitely, you make a lot of great points, and they're gonna have to choose. And the problem is. They're going to have these two guys. They're going to be on the next 10 PLEs together. So it's like they're going to like have to make that choice, right? Yeah. Like the next and show. The, and then they can just swap back and forth. Like, so like, that's like, the thing. Like, all right. So war games. Oh, yeah. Like bloodline, bloodline, civil war, main events, war games. At this point, maybe Oops. Cody's fucking a part of that um wouldn't surprise me so who who even knows but then it's like say we get to like i don't know like saturday night main event like what do you think is the main event of that saturday night main event and that is like a they're doing that as a ple right so it's technically not a ple because it is a um network it's special just- so okay, it's it, just like I a mean, special event. Well, so they are going to be treating it like a PLA pretty much. It's just technically not because it's on live television as well. Like it's going to be on NBC. Oh. So like okay. people with like cable can just like go watch it like how they watch Raw. Gotcha. Um, um, okay. But it will also be on Peacock. Yeah. I mean, it's I don't really even know like what they're going to do for that. Cause like it's gonna the main event for that is going to be something big I think, mm-hmm. because they said on SmackDown the last one was I think Randy Savage versus Andre the Giant, uh, if I'm remembering correctly that that's what Cole said. But like I think they're going to like put on like they're gonna rewind time and they're going to do it like how they used to do it with like these massive. Maybe we like, get PLE Cody Roman, matches. dude. Maybe we maybe we get Cody Could- Roman three. I, I still like so let me let me ask you this cuz this is kind of like for me the biggest question mark and the the thing that has like the most say in how this whole bloodline stuff will unfold moving forward is if and when the rock gets involved so let me ask yeah. you this do you still think the rock is getting involved yes I mean, at least happening this year. 
I'm not year. sure because it leads okay. to Rock Roman and Mania. This is what this has Agreed. to lead to. Agreed. So then, like, it has to lead to Solo saying something like, "Who do you think gave me the Ulafala?" Yeah, and then we get the like. Yeah, there's got to be some. There's no way there's not. Um, Fully agree. So that's happening at Mania. I think everyone and and their mama can agree that Rock versus Roman's at Mania. I would be very shocked if they're not doing that at this coming WrestleMania. Very shocked. So then, I still think. For me, I think there's I kind two of think Cody versus the Rock might happen at the Rumble. At the Rumble. Yeah. Interesting. I still think it happens. I don't know. Think about it. Like that's where he, t- that's where he took the title off Punk, um, all those years back. Yeah. Like sure. everyone could be like it's set up like for that same exact situation. Like Cena Rock like rematch. Rock wins the title, but this time it'll be Roman. But then it's a swerve and Cody actually wins. So. I mean, yeah, I could definitely see see that happening. It's just I think they would have a tough time kind of doing that with the Royal Rumble with, like, time-wise. Because like, you're going to have the two Royal Rumble matches, and then you're also you're going to have Cody versus Rock on the same show. Like, yeah, that's I mean, like, like right five-match show. Four matches, yeah, but like, five matches. Like that, yeah. Those you're probably like three just, matches combined is going to be like, yeah, two hours and forty minutes. So this is the thing: is it like, is War Games going to be five on five or four on four? And it's like at that's, this point, that's the question mark. At this point, it almost feels like even if it does get to five on five, that maybe. All right, because it's like Zilla Fatu has been pulled from all his GCW dates. Very interesting. And all his indie dates. So, and there's rumors that Armando Estrada, the former manager uh, of Umaga. Not rumors. He's He signed a, a Legends deal. He Armando Estrada, the former manager of Umaga, has signed a Legends deal. Zella Fatu, obviously being Umaga's son. Um, mm-hmm. So, that throws in a lot of of questions right on if on if zilla gets involved is he going to be with solo or is he going to be with roman because in a situation because before it only really felt like it made sense for him to go with roman but now i said this to you yesterday zilla fatu debuting at bad blood and getting solo whoever the pin over roman maybe like get it like having that happen and having zilla join solo that feels like it could very much happen if it, if zilla is going to debut um yeah, so that's that's the other so like the, thing the, the question is like you're out as well so i i think the most likely scenario is we get the current four bloodline versus roman the usos and sammy I think that is the most likely. Agreed. Uh, The other options, though, are you then have The Rock on Team Solo Mm. and potentially Cody on Team Roman. Or you have The Rock on Team Solo and Zilla on Team Roman. Or you have Zilla on Team Solo making it five, and then probably Cody, I would assume, on Team Roman to make that five. So, like, in that combination of, like, of of all the possibilities of a five on five, I I don't know how you feel. What do you think? I think most likely is a four on four. Still. I I still think that's most likely. Um I think if there is going to be a five on five, though, which one of those options do you think is the most likely? Like which one of those like combinations? If they're doing five on five, I think that 
I don't I don't think the Rock's going to be in more games. Neither do I. So I think that um I think that then that causes But I really want Zilla, of, but I really want Zilla Fuck 2 to be on Roman's team. I well I still think there's a good chance that he is on Roman's team even if it's 4 on 4. That it's not Sammy you're saying? Yeah. That we get Zilla. I mean Yeah, no, like, I mean he, that is Here's the thing you're too right. because like they need an enforcer. They yeah. need an enforcer and what better enforcer than Zilla Fatu has history with Jacob Fatu. Yeah, I was uh, going to say Solo you can Sokoa does the Samoan spike. Yeah, I was going to say it's just like you could so easily book Zilla coming in. Like it almost makes more sense to have him on Team Roman because of that. You know what I mean? Like That's I don't what know I'm like saying. Like That's you could I'm say saying. like yeah, he would be on Team Solo because Solo does the Samoan spike and and Jacob and him and Jacob were tagging together before Jacob went to WWE. But it almost makes more sense for him to be upset by those things rather than like I want know, to be on their side because I'm of them. You. That's what Yeah, I'm like it I'm like you. I think it I think it makes more sense like I mean obviously with the Samoan spike thing. And we saw in an interview where you said I'm thinking about taking it back. He said I'm thinking about he said did Solo ask if he could use the Samoan spike? And he said, yeah, he did. He did. He said, I'm thinking about taking it back, though. Oh, yeah. He said that. So this was a little while ago. So can't, like, act like that was, like, yesterday that he said that. But <laughs> um, it is interesting. Like, but I think even more, like, even more than the Samoan Spike thing, I think it makes a lot of sense for Zilla to be genuinely upset with Jacob Fatu. Like, you left me. Like, I was, yeah. like. I was supposed, Dude, you were supposed to were, you're supposed to have they me on so hot as, yeah. as a tag team and there's very and they, short atta- run, I know but man they were on fire dude they were so awesome yeah so um I think in a situation of of Zilla being like you left me out there to be on my own you know what I mean I was still just getting into this and you whatever you left me so I think um there's a lot of there's so many different directions they could go with it, man. Dude, that's the that's the thing. It, it, it's tough. And I think, like, so I've kind of sold myself on the fact. Um, I'm not completely sold that Zilla is going to wrestle for WWE. But gotcha. if he is signed to WWE, then I'm sold. I'm, like, very much sold on the fact that he's going to go to Team Roman because – they need an enforcer and they need someone to neutralize Jacob Fatu, right? And how mm-hmm. do you make someone you need someone that's just as, as crazy? As yeah, you are right. Uh, yeah, like as far as setting up Zilla. teams wise, yeah, like you you do need someone to kind of be that enforcer. Like he, yeah, as I, as much as they could get away with just having Sammy be that fourth guy, it makes a lot more sense to have Roman get a new enforcer and yeah, um. So, I also think the dynamic of Solo's bloodline, it, it's you got Solo the leader, you, you have Jacob Fatu the right hand man, and then you have the tag team. I think, like, bro, and Zilla's tall. Like, like so is, this is what I was going to say tall. not to be that guy. Like, Z- Zilla would be like, Zilla's bigger than Solo. So, for Solo to bring in Jacob and then Zilla just doesn't feel like, I don't know. It's got to feel like Roman's got to have some connections left, right? It's like, can't be like Solo's sure. got everyone in the family. Like, yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, so yeah. So, like, I, I think, think they could this, do a lot of This pod fun has kind of convinced me. And I think they're going to do a lot of, they, like, there's so much stuff there. And like you said, they could obviously do so many different things and go in a lot of different directions with all of this. But, like, I think having Zilla with Team Roman would be a lot of fun. Him and Solo will have beef with the Samoan Spike. Um, obviously, if you throw Armando Estrada in there, like, there's going to be a lot of stuff with him and Zilla. Um, and then especially, like, with Paul Heyman's gonna come back uh, eventually, like you just need like Roman needs an enforcer, 
it, it's that simple. Mm -hmm. And like Sammy is probably the most likely person to be the fourth member, not necessarily the enforcer. I think the second most likely option is probably Zillow. And I think he's someone who could match and has matched the intensity uh, of Jacob. Do Fatu you is think the only one there is a better neutralize do, you, do you think there's a better chance that Zilla is in more games or Cody? Like if you had to put your money on one of them being in more games, Zilla. Interesting. Um, what about you? I'd put my money on Cody. I think it's much more likely, okay. but I mean, I'd much rather have it be Zilla. So, so I my thing with like I, now Cody getting into the mix and all of this, it's um, it, it's makes things a little tougher to figure my out. My thing and... is, I'm like, I think they just do it like. They don't need to leave them in too long. The, I think it'll be just the right amount if they have them in for this tag match, and then we get a really, really despicable heel turn from Kevin Owens after. And then we get back to Cody and KO with the, this heel KO. Um, I, I think that makes a lot more sense than dragging it on and having Cody still be involved in the story past Bad Blood. That that's what I think as well. That was kind of like the main my main reason with with why I think that Zilla has a, a more like I like said, and I'm only saying that just because, just because there's no con just because there's no confirmation of Zilla being signed or anything like that. So it's like yeah, um, like I said, if I had to put my money on Cody, but I love the idea of it being Zilla, and I really hope it is. I would say this too. I think there's a better chance that it's not Cody than it is Cody, regardless of who it is. I don't think Cody's going to be involved in the war games because I think it's going to be a situation of like Roman kind of now like real, like more firmly putting his foot down and being like, this is war. Like I, you can't get involved in this because I need to go after you next. And this is, this is family business. Like he said, like, this yeah, is, we're blood. Yeah. And so, like, even if it's not... That's what I'm saying. Like, it's the idea of Cody being in this tag match, of where they can go with it, with the story, I like the idea of it. But he can't... But he needs to get out after this tag match. Like, he Agreed. can't be involved And it's like, anymore. why Why would like, he be in yeah. this War Games match? Like, what would his reasoning be to do this? Yeah, like, what is he gonna... Yeah, like, what is he gaining? Yeah, like, and, like, because they're already, like, barely even getting by with like this this tag match like uh i still like i probably missed it but like i still i'm not i don't know what is like what his reasoning is uh to tag with roman to take on solo and, and jacob fatu at bad blood so it's like that's what I think a lot of people, especially like you said before, all of his friends uh in the back are like like why are you doing this? Like this is the guy that you were just feuding with for two years and now you're just teaming up with him for what like yeah. you it bro solo had me you. dying when he was like when did you see solo when he was like he doesn't like you he beat you at <laughs> wrestlemania <laughs> no <laughs> like when like Ro when, like it was when like um like when roman was like looking at cody and cody like had his hand out to hand him the contract and stuff and solo like like solo was standing there looking at him he was like <laughs> He was like, he doesn't like you. He was like, he he hates you. He beat you at WrestleMania. Like, I don't know. It was just really funny. Dude, the new bloodline. I'll tell you this. The new bloodline's kind of funny, dude. I like, <laughs> like this. Weird... It's really grown on me. I love Tamatanga coming out. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> It's so funny. I think that he noticed people were like, yo, what the fuck is that? And he's like, oh, yeah, I got to go harder on that. Whatever I was yeah. doing there, <laughs> I got to go harder on that. Like, he's just Dude, coming out. Like, yeah. Tongaloa. <laughs> even Tongaloa is just becoming, like, <laughs> leaning more into being funny, too. Uh, I'm here for it, man. Yeah. I, I think they're they're funny. So let me ask you this. To me... I think this tag match, them doing this tag match, another reason is I think something big's going down after it. Hmm. Um, like what like you were kind of through KO heel turn maybe after the match, but like cause I don't think that Roman and Cody are winning. 
Uh, I'll give an early prediction. I may change. Neither not an I. official prediction, unofficial prediction. But right now, I don't think they're going to win. And I think that the only reason that they would have them not win is because of something big that's going to happen to kind of make you forget that two of their that one of those two just ate a pin. Um, do you think? Are you thinking the same thing? Is something crazy going to happen? Like what? How do you think this kind of plays out as like an early look into it? So, I mean, there's always, always, for right now, until we get the return, there's always the chance that we get a rock return um, at some point. Mm -hmm. So, can't rule that out yeah. because he's coming back at some point. So, until it happens, it's possible. Um, sure. The most likely thing, I think it's a situation where the bloodline gets involved. KO comes to help. Maybe a situation where he doesn't want to help Roman. Or it's a situation where he tries to help. And then maybe Roman spears him or something. Mm. Or a situation where he tries to help. And then he's like just taken out by the bloodline like really badly. It's going to be something, I think, where KO is going to come to the aid. But it's going to have negative consequences for Kevin Owens, which is going to lead to him turning on Cody afterwards. I think Roman and I think Roman just probably storms off pissed as hell after the match that they lost. Um, And then it's left with Cody looking at KO being like, I'm so sorry. And then KO just fucking loses it on him. And we get a classic KO, like after Sammy mm. won the NXT title, sort of like that turn. Good times. Um, Good times. Where he just goes ballistic. And we get multiple power bombs on the apron. Um, we're getting a whole bunch of shit. So that's what so, I think. I, I think there is a good a better chance than people may think that the rock returns at bad blood. Okay. Um, because I like call me crazy. I still think we're getting Cody versus rock at Saudi Arabia. And that's the next okay. PLE after bad blood. So I think there's a good chance that rock comes out. Maybe he cost them the match maybe cody eats a pin from solo uh, i think it could throw a lot of questions into the air maybe jacob fatu pins roman to do roman versus fatu at saudi and then cody versus rock i think there's a better chance that people are giving it that the rock is going to return at bad blood because i think we're getting him versus cody well before wrestlemania and I think there's a chance it happens at Royal Rumble. I don't think it's very likely. I think that, like we said before, you know, Saudi Arabia is gonna gonna throw out the the big dollars, and, and they want the top stars. And, and what bigger big money match is there uh, than than having Rock yeah. versus Cody? The idea of like the the idea of them knowing that the Rock is a possibility, and them not just dishing out literally billions of dollars to get the Rock over there. Just like from a logistics standpoint, like it's like when Goldberg came back, Goldberg went. Like when Taker was coming back, Taker was going. Mm. Like they yeah. they know what they want, man. So I, I think, yeah, they're going to pay the money I'll for say, it probably. And, so. and I'll, I'll say this too as our uh, a final little kind of heads up thing. Uh, Jey Uso is challenging Braun for the IC title. For the listener, if you're watching this when it comes out, it is Monday Night Raw tonight. For us, it has not happened yet. So here's the thing, Dale. I think there could be little shenanigans in this match with some maybe one of the Bloodline guys gets involved because I'll tell you what, Jay can't mm -hmm. lose cleanly. And... The only way that yeah. makes sense is if the bloodline screws him. Like, what, what, what say you about that? Yeah, I mean, I don't hate it. I think it makes a lot of sense. Um, like you said, he can't lose clean. 
really can't take the clean loss. So we got to get them roped back in somehow. So yeah, and if like if the bloodline like doesn't get involved and like nothing with that kind of happens, uh, I will be very shocked and pretty disappointed because um, Jay is just kind of floating around on Monday Night Raw. So let's give him something to do. Uh, and obviously he's going to be heading back towards the bloodline stuff. So, um, so yeah, keep an eye out for that just in case something crazy happens. I told you so. So, uh, we're going to wrap it up there, but, but like we said from the start, all of dogs stuff will be linked in the description down below September 28th, sacred heart church this Saturday, this Saturday, Saturday, Saturday. New Jersey. Bell time, 7.30, $20 admission. Uh, they have a ton of uh, matches, and the card is absolutely stacked. So we will be live from there. We better see you there. We'll be having uh, – we'll have a bunch of T-shirts there as well, along with some flyers, stickers, all of that good stuff. We're going to be live from there. We'll be live on X, Facebook, YouTube, and and twitch so all of that stuff again will be linked in the description down below so we better see you there and make sure to follow a uh, dog on all of their stuff with that being said uh, i'm mark Izzo, he's dylan o'brien and this has been another episode of the burning hammer podcast we'll catch you next week